Good evening, and welcome to Kingswood Church, where we love God, serve others, and build sacred community. Tonight is Good Friday, the night in which we remember the betrayal, the trial, the crucifixion, death, and burial of Jesus. It is probably the penultimate, the, the extreme example of wilderness, of being isolated and devastated. It's a time of great sorrow and injustice. It is an important part of our life to face the cross as a part of our Holy Week journey. We welcome you to tonight's service and we especially welcome our guests. And we hope that you'll register your attendance by visiting our website or our app to let us know that you're here. If this is your first time with Kingswood, we welcome you. And we hope that you'll register with your full information so that we might send you a gift of welcome. But we're so grateful, so grateful that you're here today as a part of our Good Friday service. I do offer these few announcements to you now so that as the service ends tonight, we can uh, begin uh, uh, to be in prayer as we journey into Holy Saturday and prepare for Easter morning. Again, a warm welcome to all of you and a blessed Good Friday. And again, we encourage guests to register on the app or website. You can also offer prayer concerns there as well. On Sunday morning, uh, there'll be Easter sunrise service in person at 7.30 a.m. in the Memorial Prayer Garden, which is west of our building. And there'll be a 9 a.m. in person in our sanctuary. You need to have reservations and masks will be worn. There'll be an Easter celebration service at 10 a.m. And we hope you'll join us online for that service with brass and great celebration. Join us for Easter this Sunday. Tomorrow, Holy Saturday, the caravan crew will go to a local hospice center in Barrington to bring songs of love and care to those in need on Easter weekend. We will meet in Barrington at 9.45 a.m. tomorrow, and we hope you'll sign up on our webpage now so that we'll know you're coming. Our new sermon series will begin on April the 11th, The Walk, Five Essential Practices of the Christian Life. It begins April 11th. Join us for worship, some special walk events, and our book studies. It's a wonderful time of learning and growing together. Again, we hope that this service is powerful and prayerful as we journey together. Amen. Hi, I'm Erin Holmes, the Executive Director of the District 214 Education Foundation. Our foundation works diligently to match student needs with resources so we can make sure every student succeeds beyond the means of conventional funding for public education. The need has always been there. It has never been greater. In March, we launched 214 Cares, a campaign that was specifically directed at meeting the needs of our students and families impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. Our community responded tremendously. It was inspiring. It was impactful. The needs are significant. Food, utility bills, mortgage and rent payments, transportation, co-curricular costs, curriculum needs. The list goes on and on. Some things might seem really affordable to some of us, but are crippling to some of our families. Your tax deductible contribution will make a real impact on the lives of our students and their families. On behalf of the foundation and our entire board of trustees, thank you.
demands my soul, my life, my all. Let us now join together in these words of gathering. It is so hard to be here in the wilderness. Fear, betrayal, hurt, anger, and loss. Standing here at the foot of the cross, weeping, struggling, mourning. It is so hard to be here in the wilderness. A wilderness where injustice and death find their home. So let us now join together in this opening prayer. O oh Jesus, we confess our sins and our desire for wilderness instead of life. We often remain silent as others suffer and struggle. At the cross, you offer your saving love as you reveal our hearts completely. Forgive us. Amen. Hello, Kingswood. Our first scripture today comes from Psalms, chapter 22, verses 1 through 18. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the words of my groaning? O oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel, and you our ancestors trusted. They trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved, and you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am worn and not human, scorned by others and despised by the people. All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me. They shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord. Let him deliver. Let him rescue the one in whom he delights. Yet it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe on my mother's breast. On you I was cast from my birth, and since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls encircle me, strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a ravening and roaring lion. I am pouring out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs are all around me. A company of evil doers encircles me. My hands and feet have shriveled. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. The second scripture is from the book of John, chapter 19, verses 16 through 37, the crucifixion of Jesus. Then he handed him over to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, do not write the king of the Jews, but rather this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says, they divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. 
Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, the Jews did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, especially because that Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified so that you also may believe. His testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth. These things occurred so that the scripture might be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. And again, another passage of scripture says, they will look on the one whom they have pierced. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Amen. How did we get here? Why did this happen? This should not be happening. Jesus taught us to love and forgive, to serve one another. He healed people. He only wanted what was best for us. God, our Father, why did you let it come to this? The trial was dreadful. They made up lies, twisted things. Treason, my word, treason. Since when was healing treason? This is fear in action. They were afraid that Jesus would change the order of things, change the power structure. And yes, we were, still are afraid. A lot of us are hiding already. But his own people, turning him on him like that, it makes me angry. People didn't understand what he was saying or trying to do. And yet, we didn't either at first. Like when he said he would choose to die and rise again. That I'll never understand. But it was about love. Everything was about love. Jesus loved everyone. I love him. Jesus. Please help me love the people that you loved. My firstborn son, how can I give you up? 
I remember the night that you were born in that stable. So much joy, so much hope. Oh God, I want your will, but why my son? Why your son? Why this? How could they mock him, spit in his face, beat him? Why must he suffer so? Jesus, I know you're God's son, the Messiah, the promised one, the one we longed for to make us a great nation. But everything you did was not what we expected. We wanted you to cleanse our temples, and you cleansed our hearts. Oh, Jesus, we didn't always understand you, but we always, always loved you. Dear Lord, please help me be strong for Jesus. I have a duty to perform. And while I do not particularly like this part of my job, it's my intent to do my duty and then go home. The Jews demanded his execution because they claimed that Jesus had said he was king of the Jews. The soldiers stripped him and placed a crimson robe on him and a crown of thorns on his head. And they mocked him, saying, Hail, king of the Jews! I watched from a distance because I had to be there. On the road to Golgotha, Jesus became so weak that they detailed someone to assist him in carrying his cross. When they arrived, they hammered nails into his hands and his feet, and yet he didn't utter a sound. When they raised the cross, he said these words which I will never forget. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. How could a man in such agony say such things? Now, I'll be honest, I know nothing of his religion, and I've never heard any of Jesus' teachings. But this I truly believe. He was a righteous man. Lord, I believe you are God's son. You know we honor you in our home. I just cannot go public. It would be a disaster to openly practice our beliefs. My family would suffer. The arranged marriages of my daughters would be canceled. There would be no business left for my sons to inherit. I would be put to death. Then who would take care of my children? But I want to do something. I know. I have the open tomb. I know who to ask. I will do it. Jesus, you healed me. You helped me when no one else would do anything but shove me aside. You showed me compassion. You cared about me. You cared for everyone. Took care of everyone. Loved everyone. You are not who they say you are. You are not a criminal. You taught us to love our neighbors as ourselves, to love our enemies, to forgive. I must, we must all live our lives as you have. Jesus, I will love you forever. You are my God forever. King of the Jews? They wrote that to make fun of him. But when he healed my daughter, he just took her hand, and she was alive. They said she was dead, but she was alive. Jesus, come down. You saved others, now save yourself. They're still mocking him, but I believe that he could do what they say. If he could save my daughter, I believe he could come down. He really could. But why doesn't he? Does this mean that he decided to let this happen? Why? What is all this? All this sadness and mourning? They're criminals. 
The one in the middle is even accused by his own people. The people that should show him support have turned against him. He must be guilty. All those people could not be wrong. He didn't even try to defend himself. You can't give vague answers to the council questions and expect to be set, sent away free. Why did the sky get dark? Nature does not mourn over ordinary men. Who is this man? Who is Jesus of Nazareth? It's over. Everything we believed, our teacher is dead. Just when we were beginning to understand, oh God, why now? Why this? I know what he said about dying, but this? Do you ask of us the same thing? Are we to die also? He asked God to forgive even the ones who did this to him, even in his dying. I want to love like that, but I cannot forgive those who put him there. God, please forgive me. Maybe it's not over. If we keep your teachings alive, maybe it's not over. Is that what you want? For us to love and tell people about your teachings, is that what you want? It is the darkness a sign to us all. We will not let your teachings die, Jesus. We will share your life, your love, with everyone we can.
We're so grateful for the drama presentation. What a gift that's helped us to center ourselves tonight. I just want to say a few words about wilderness as we experience this powerful story. Tonight we have heard the powerful story through the drama and we continue to have heard it through the readings. And there's a whole story of the crucifixion in each of the Gospels, but tonight we focus on the Gospel of John. We focus in a very variety of places, the betrayal, the trial, the interrogations, and certainly the crucifixion. I lift up to you chapter 19 as a place to center yourself over these next two days as we prepare for Easter. Jesus is in the deepest place of wilderness. Jesus is in a place of great struggle. And we lift him in prayer today, uh, in our lives, and our hearts, as we remember his sacrifice. You'll remember that the crucifixion took place this way. The soldiers took Jesus prisoner. In John, there is no Simon of Cyrene to carry his cross, for John portrays Jesus as strong and capable even in the midst of this difficult moment. Jesus carries his cross by himself, and he goes to a place of wilderness, a place called Golgotha, which in Aramaic means the skull place. The, the, the hill was shaped like a skull. That's where the soldiers and the government and the religious leaders crucified him and two others with him, one on each side and Jesus in the middle. Unlike the other Gospels, we know very little about these two, but we know that they're there. Pilate had public notice written and placed and posted on the cross, and above Jesus' head it read, Jesus the Nazarene, for he was from Nazareth, the king of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this sign, and for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and the sign was written in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek, the three primary languages. Therefore, the chief priests complained to Pilate, don't write that, write this, that the man said, I am the king of the Jews. But it's the one place that Pilate, the Roman leader, answered with some courage, what I have written, I have written. When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and his sandals and divided them into four shares, one for each soldier. His shirt or his outer garment was seamless, woven as one piece from top to bottom. And they said to each other, let's not tear it, let's cast lots, let's gamble for it. So this was to fulfill the scripture, that they divided my clothes among themselves and they cast lots from my clothing. That's what the soldiers did in the wilderness. A moving place in the story and then in a place of wilderness is a brief moment of grace. Jesus' mother and his mother's sister Mary and Mary Magdalene, the three women who had continued to be courageous when all the disciples had fled, those women were there. And when Jesus saw his mother from the cross and the disciple with whom he loved standing by him, who we know to be John, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, the beloved disciple, to John, here is your mother. And from that time on, this disciple took her into his home. You see, Jesus is in charge. Jesus is still strong. Jesus is still making decisions in the midst of the wilderness of the crucifixion and of Golgotha. After knowing this, knowing that everything was already completed, in order to fulfill the scripture, Jesus said, I am thirsty. Of course he was. He had been there for hours. He had been there struggling. But instead of offering him water, a jar full of sour wine was nearby. So the soldier soaked a sponge in it and placed it on a hyssop branch and held it to his lips, hyssop being a sign of purity. When Jesus had received the sour wine, Jesus said, it is finished. And bowing his head, Jesus gave up his life. The power of Jesus' strength seems lost in this moment. In the darkness of his death, it seems to be the last word. It seems like the deepest, most difficult place of wilderness ever. We're told that it was preparation day for the feast of the Passover, and the leaders didn't want the bodies to remain on the cross because of the Sabbath, especially since the Sabbath was an important and holy day. So they asked Pilate to have the legs broken of those crucified, and they began to break the legs of all who were crucified, but they noticed that Jesus was already dead, so they didn't break his legs. 
However, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear and immediately blood and water came out. This is so significant for us because blood and water are symbolic of the sacraments. This is the blood given for you and the water is the sign of baptism. The one who saw this has testified and his testimony is true and the witness continues that indeed scripture was fulfilled. After this, Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate if he could take away the body of Jesus. Joseph was a disciple of Jesus, but a secret one because he feared the authorities and leaders. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and took the body away. And another secret, kind of fearful disciple, Nicodemus, the one who had come to Jesus in the night with that question earlier in chapter 3, was there too. He brought a mixture of myrrh and aloe, nearly 75 pounds. It's an extravagant amount. And following Jewish burial customs, customs the two of them took Jesus' body and wrapped it and placed it in linen cloths. There was a garden in the place where Jesus was crucified, and in the garden was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid, because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and the tomb was nearby. They laid Jesus in this tomb in the garden. It's fascinating. The garden imagery will be deeply connected to the original Garden of Eden. It will also be attached to the garden in which uh, someone will encounter Jesus in the coming verses ahead. But in this moment, in the darkness of a garden, in the emptiness of, and darkness and wilderness of a tomb, that's where we find ourselves. That's our journey. We walk with Jesus in places of deep injustice, brokenness, and sin. We acknowledge our own brokenness on Good Friday and our contribution to the brokenness of the world. Good Friday is a time for us to reflect deeply on the wilderness moments of our lives and how God is leading us from brokenness and sin to transformation and new life. But in this moment, on this Good Friday, I invite you and me to remain here in this darkness, in this wilderness, and to open ourselves wide over these next 24 hours to God. God, shape me, change me, transform me, use me. May this Good Friday, this Good Friday be different than any other as we live in the wilderness moment. Amen. As we now enter this moment in space for prayer, we want to lift up those in need of strength, healing, and comfort. We want to be in prayer for Nancy Reddiford, for Seth Swanson, and we want to continue to lift up those in need who continue to struggle with COVID-19 and the pandemic. And we also want to pray for a quick distribution of the vaccine. With all of that before us, let us now go to God in prayer. Faithful God, we stand in the dim, the dim shadows of a cross longing for resurrection. But today we pause. We pause to remember the pain of the cross and the pain of the crosses we've faced. We pause to cry for the pain of COVID-19, of racism and violence. As the disciples wept on that fateful day so long ago, we weep for the Savior, for the tree. As those first disciples wondered whether that fateful day was the end of their dreams, we admit that we're afraid that our dream of a just and nonviolent world is fleeting and in peril of death. Help us, God, as we live in the tension between this death and your seeming silence, the day after the crucifixion, just before the resurrection. In the name and pain of the crucified one, Jesus, we pray the prayer that he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So as we now enter in this space to, to give to the work that we continue to do here at Kingswood. At Kingswood, we love God, we serve others, and we build sacred community. And through this Lenten season, we have continued to give and partner with our two local high schools um, as we continue to uh, love God and serve others in that way to help those in need. And I encourage you in, in this time and, and season, uh, this opportunity for you to, to give, to also partner in that work together of supporting families in uh, their time of need, especially in the midst of COVID-19. And there's three ways in which you can continue to give as we love God, serve others, and build a community. The first way is to mail a check to 401 West Dundee Road, and we'll receive that here at the church. Second way is to go to our website, kingswoodumc.com giving. You can hit the donate tab and give in that way. And the third way is to go to our app, uh, our, our mobile app or, or tablet, and you can access that um, through the uh, Apple App Store, the Google Play Store. You can hit online giving and give in that way. Whatever way you choose to give, remember, here at Kingswood, we love God, we serve others, and we build sacred community. Amen. Receive this benediction. Go forth into the night. May it be a quiet night. A night maybe of reflection. Maybe a night of deep, deep discernment and self, you know, just examination. May this Good Friday be on time of wilderness in which you are shaped into something new and amazing. But don't rush it. Live in this moment, this wilderness, this Good Friday. Amen.
Oh, oh, oh.